together for worship. <laughs> Good morning, Dave. Good to see you, brother. Yeah. Tempted and tried, we're all making one. Why it should be there all the day long. While there are others living above the never molested, though in the wrong, farther. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. When we see Jesus come in glory, when he comes from home in the sky then we shall meet him in that bright mansion we'll understand it all by and by father alone Grant it, Jesus, in my plea. Just 
when my feeble life is over, time for me will be no house of the Lord after a week like we've had, right? <laughs> Whether it was a good week or a bad week, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Glad you all are here today. In your bulletins that you got, there's a connection card. I invite you to take that connection card out and fill it out, uh, and you can put it back at the end of the service. You can put it back on the table where you picked up your communion. If you didn't pick up your communion yet, uh, we invite you to go ahead and, and uh, do that, and you can leave your offering uh, uh, to the Lord there as well, and uh, if you'd like to be able to give online, you can do that. It's on the front page down to the bottom, and you can click the Donate Here uh, button. If you're a guest with us today, uh, you can take out your cell phone and text the word hello to that phone number that's there. It's also in the bulletin. You can find it in there, and uh, you'll get a good greeting from the church, and we'd uh, love to give you a gift as well. Well, at least one more week we're going to be reading Ephesians 6. I'll tell you here uh, in the message time how long we've been reading Ephesians 6. Okay? Are we getting it yet? I surely hope so. And encouraged by it as well. So check your bulletin for uh, further announcements that are in there. There's a couple of new things that are in there, so uh, check those things out. This time we're going to have our missions moment, and uh, Bruce is going to come and encourage us with that. And then following that, we're going to stand, and he will lead us in reading uh, our congregational scripture together. Can you hear me? There we go. That's a little better. Today we're going we're gonna to highlight Jacob's Well Ministries. And what, what's a good thing about this is this is something right here in cold water, and, and I love that. It, it's a really good outreach uh, mission. The beauty of Jacob's well, and this is going to go through and explain some things. Jacob's Well Ministries is a ministry that assists those who are facing a short-term crisis. These are our friends and neighbors in our community. You might not think you know them, but you do. You see them daily as you live, work, and play in this community. You see them at the store, the gas station, or walking down the street. You see them at work, and you see them at school. Each day... I had the privilege of meeting with those seeking assistance for their needs and sharing with them how we have those funds, and it's because of you, the givers. The beauty of Jacob's Well is it literally is this community taking care of its own. The support of our local churches, businesses, organizations, and private donors is how we have funds to keep people in their homes. Utilities kept on meet transportation and medical needs, keep essential internet services on, and advise and direct families or individuals to other resources such as food distributions, community meals, health clinics, shelters, and so much more. Thank you for partnering with God and being his hands and feet to this community. The beauty of Jacob's Well is God is already providing for our needs long before we even need them, and he is using all of us for his mission. From him and with you, Sherry Bird, Executive Director. Um, this is just a little description of what, what they did their last quarter. It said, your contributions at work. 
11 individuals and families this last quarter were able to remain in their homes or establish safe permanent housing with the assistance of Jacob's World Ministries. What I love about these 11 different situations is some required assistance up to our cap of $400, while there was one who only needed $50. Then there were some that were somewhere in between. From the one who only needed $50 to the ones that needed $400, the provision of God meeting the need of the $50 is one of, just as great as the one of $400. What comes to my mind is, as the eyes is on the sparrow, for his eyes is on a sparrow, and I know he watches me. And that says, thank you for allowing God to use you in such tender and magnificent ways. So it, it's, it's nice because whatever need you have, they're going to take care of it. Like I said, whether it's $50 or $400 of their cap, they're, they're there to help. And, it's, and, and it is, they're, they're a short-term out, outreach group. And they are there because of your support. And that's why we continue to support them as a church. <laughs> Almost forgot. Shall we stand? Listen to my prayer for mercy as I cry out to you for help, as I lift my hands toward your holy sanctuary. But I will call on the Lord, and the Lord will rescue me. Morning, noon, and night, I cry out in my distress, and the Lord hears my voice. He ransoms me and keeps me safe from the battle waged against me, though many still oppose me. I cry out to the most high. To God who will fulfill his purpose for me. I cry out to God, yes, I shout. Oh, that God would listen to me. I cry aloud to the Lord. I lift my voice to the Lord for mercy.
and it just hits you. Just You're just amazed at how much God loves you personally. It's truly amazing when the Spirit uh, impresses that upon us. And so we get to sing it now as we prepare our hearts for communion as well. I stand today. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus of Nazareth.
wonderful and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Amen. Maybe cheated. Today for communion comments, I'll be reading from the book of Matthew, the 27th chapter, starting with verse 45. And at noon, darkness fell across the whole land until 3 o'clock. At about 3 o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, le masakathathini, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought that he was calling for the prophet Elijah. And one of them ran out and filled a sponge of sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed, so, on a stick, so he could drink it. But the rest said, wait, let's see whether Elijah, come, Elijah comes to save him. Then Jesus shouted out again, and he released his spirit. And at that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, rocks split apart, and tombs were opened. The bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. They left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection and went to the holy city of Jerusalem and appeared to many people. And a Roman officer and a sol other soldiers at the crucifixion were terrified by the earthquake and all that would have happened. And they said, this man truly was the Son of God. Shall we pray? God, as we read these scriptures and all four of the Gospels, it's amazing how much that your son, your son went through, all the pain, the agony, the grief and how he cried out to you but we love you so much for sending him to this earth that we may no longer have to be afraid of death we know that this place is just temporary and we know that one day we'll be home with you in heaven and we thank you for that and at this time we come together as a church to remember what your son did for us on the cross it's your son today for all these things amen and reading from the book of luke 22 verse 19 Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me and after supper he took another cup of wine and said this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice to you. Drink this in remembrance of me. from Ephesians 1. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. And it is a comparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as that mighty strength. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you be rooted and established in love. May have power together with the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know that this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we, can, all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen.
earlier in the service today uh, didn't uh, remind you to find out the name of the people near you. And we, when we get to this point in the service, we want to be able to pray for each other by name. Good to see you, Benji. All right. Yeah, it's good to see Dale and Jean here this morning. Uh, there are others I, I, I haven't been here in a while because of surgeries or sicknesses, and so it's good to see uh, one another today. And there's a lot of empty places, right? That, that means there's a lot of folks to pray for uh, because of uh, things going on in their lives as well. So uh, we're going to take 30 seconds, find out each other's names, and then we're going to pray for each other. So let's bow our heads and let's uh, lift, e lift up each other before the Lord today. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. And we've been able to come together and worship you with uh, all of our hearts and soul and might and strength and that you would strengthen us today in our faith and help us, Lord, uh, in our walk this week. And so we pray for one another that we will uh, draw near to you, that we would gain wisdom from you, that you would give us strength for the things that we face this week that you would bring healing into our lives, that you would, uh, Lord, give us the ability uh, to uh, see clearly the leading of the Spirit uh, in our lives. Uh, Lord, we pray that the eyes of our hearts may be enlightened, that we may know the hope to which you have called us. Lord, you have given us so many riches and a glorious inheritance, and we thank you, Lord, for giving us a power and help us, Lord, as we listen to the message today from your word that we realize where the power is and where it comes from and how we can access it. We're so thankful, Lord, for your love and how high and deep and long and wide is the love that you have had for us as we celebrated, as we uh, took the bread and the cup. So, Lord, as we delve into your word today, Open up our spirits, Lord, that we may hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. And take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Is that not what we do every Sunday? We take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Perhaps one of the biggest spiritual battles that we face is to pray. Now you might say, well, Jeff, I pray all the time. But I know that there are times... When sometimes we'll look back to, oh, I wish I would have prayed about that, or I should have prayed sooner. Um, there are times when uh, we could be called on to pray. Will you pray? Oh, I couldn't do that. And, and you realize what we say when, we're, when we do that. We're saying, oh, I can't call upon the power of God in our lives. Who am I? Well, let me tell you who you are. You are a child of God. You see, to believe, to believe that prayer is actually the major key, believing that God will answer the prayer according to his will, because you know what? God knows the big picture, doesn't he? 
So let me tell you about the, just the Apostle Paul. Not long, just real short. Matter of fact, two things. Number one, he loved Jesus. Do you love Jesus? Yes, well, yes we do. Okay. Secondly, he believed in prayer as, the, as crucial to the Christian walk. It is not a secondary. It is a priority. So in this passage that we have been uh, studying, he says we take up the full armor of God, and he says uh, that we are to uh, put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the uh, feet uh, with the gospel of peace, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is uh, the uh, shield of faith, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And then he says this. This is our verse for today. He says, and, so in other words, equal with the armor of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. And also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, and that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. So I ran through uh, all the letters that Paul wrote in the New Testament, and I'm not going to tell you everything that he taught us about prayer, but here's a few things. Christians, devote yourselves to prayer. The Spirit of God intercedes for us when we pray. And Paul himself asked for prayers. He says, pray that I'll be kept safe from unbelievers. Pray also that God will deliver us from wicked and evil people. Pray that God will open up a door for our message about Jesus and that it will spread rapidly. Pray that we will declare, proclaim the message of Christ clearly. He wanted the people to pray for him. He continues to instruct us. Pray that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened, that God will strengthen you with the power to grasp the love of Christ. Pray that your love will abound more and more, that it will grow and grow and grow in knowledge and depth of insight. When you pray, every time you pray, pray with thanksgiving. Pray without ceasing, asking God for help. Pray that the name of the Lord will be glorified in you. Pray for kings and those in authority. When you pray, lift up holy hands in prayer. When you pray... You consecrate things, and you can sanctify things with prayer. In that passage, he was talking about like foods that have been sacrificed to idols and, and things like that. He says, he says, everything is a gift, a good gift from God. Pray over it, consecrate it, and it's good. And then he talks about, he gave an example, Epaphras. He says in, in Philippians, he says, Epaphras is always wrestling in prayer. When's the last time you wrestled in prayer? I mean, it, it, some people call it praying through. You just keep praying and you're praying and you pray through till you get to the victory. That's what Epaphras did. So those are some things that Paul taught. And then I think about what Jesus said. It, it, it's somewhat mysterious. Probably will always be somewhat mysterious. But I believe there's a specific application. Jesus said to the disciples, he said it to Peter specifically in one chapter, Matthew 16. And then two chapters later, he's talking to all of the disciples. And he says this, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That's an amazing teaching. It's a teaching about spiritual authority. It's a teaching about declaring God's authority in the name of Jesus. So I asked you a question earlier, and I answered it, but I want to be more pointed now. Who are you? 
You are a child of God. God loves you dearly, and he wants to hear you. God wants to know what's on your heart. And he wants to know how you need his help and what you need his help for. He wants to know your heart. Don't say, well, he already knows what's on my heart. He already knows the words I'm going to speak before I even, uh, you know, say them. Not the point. There's a principle in Scripture that says we need to declare with our lips before God. What do you want God to do for the church? Now, that could be for Northview, or it could be for the church in general. But what is it you want? See, a lot of times we come to church and say, well, what can God do for me? Right? What, can God, what am I going to get out of this? God wants to hear, what do you want for the church? Ask for that. What do you want God to do through the church this week? What do you want God to do through us? In Branch County, in the surrounding, wherever we are this week, what do you want God to do through us? Ask God for that. Tell him. That's why Paul asked for prayers. Do you think Paul needed the prayers of the church? Absolutely. Absolutely. Prayer is the key to the heart of God. And we access it. Through, so through Jesus' teaching on prayer and through Paul's teaching on prayer, get this. Every day, ordinary Christians can call on the power of God to intervene in real life situations. Well, I'll call the pastor or I'll call the elders because, you know, they're, they're, they're the ones with the real connection, Right? Every Christian has that connection to God. One is not higher than the other. And you know what we all pray for? May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? So, yeah, I give Lord, yeah. So now, we get to the end of Ephesians here. These couple of verses that we read... We've been reading Ephesians 6 every week for two months. Two months. I haven't heard one person say, Jeff, I'm tired of reading Ephesians 6. Hopefully, each week it's become more and more and more powerful. I hope you know Ephesians 6 like you know the back of your hand. Why? Because the days are getting more evil and you need to know how to... How to Fight spiritual battles. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. So how do we do that? We put on the armor of God first, truth, right? Righteousness, salvation, peace, faith, the word. Every week I've emphasized how each one of these elements of the armor of God is like putting on Jesus. I've also made it clear that we can only know these things by knowing the Word of God. Can we know what truth is other than what God tells us what truth is? Because this world does crazy things with words. Crazy things. And so we know the truth by knowing the Word of God. So be strong, Christians. Be strong in the truth. Be strong in righteousness. What is it that Jesus said? Remember? Hunger and thirst for what? So do it. Be strong in the gospel. Be strong in salvation. Be strong in faith. Be strong in the word of God. And pray as if spiritual battles are won through prayer. Why? Because they are. Because they are. So Paul says in Ephesians 6.18, his first phrase, pray in the Spirit. Very simply, 
Call on the name of the Lord and the power of God to hear and answer your prayers spoken to him. These are not well wishes. These are not positive vibes or positive thoughts. I hear that being said more and more and more all the time. I see it on Facebook. I hear people say it with my ears. Send some positive thoughts my way. That is not praying in the Spirit. And that is not where the power of God is accessed. Scripture is clear. That's what those who don't believe in the power of God say. Well, throw some good thoughts my way. Well, I mean, I do. I have, I have good thoughts. But that's not where the power comes from. Right? Here's something else pagans will do. You'll find this in other religions. They'll write prayers down on a wheel. And then they'll take that wheel and they'll spin it. And they believe that the more they spin it, the more those prayers fly up to heaven. And the more prayers there are, the more, there, the more their gods will hear them. Let me tell you something. That is not praying in the Spirit. It's, it's, it's good wrist exercise, I guess. Maybe build up your biceps a little bit. But it's not... Praying in the spirit. Worshippers of false gods. I've, I saw it with my own eyes in, when I was in Hong Kong. Worshippers of false gods will light incense. Place it before the idols that are there in, in their temples. Hoping, wishing that their gods will hear their prayers. This is not praying in the Spirit. You don't pray in the Spirit by burning incense. You don't pray in the Spirit by spinning prayer wheels. You don't pray in the Spirit by having good wishes and positive thoughts and positive energy. You know that's Eastern mysticism talk, don't you? That's Eastern mysticism talk. And that's not the God of the Bible. Praying in the Spirit is a direct connection between a person of God praying to God. When Paul writes to the Corinthian church about praying in the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 14, 15, he says, I pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. So when we sang earlier, is it possible that you sang the songs, but not with your spirit? You just sang the songs. Absolutely. I mean, you could sing the songs and not make a connection with God, even though the words are about worship to God and the words are about God or, you know, something in that matter. But you know what? You could, you could have been singing the song, but your mind was on what you're having for lunch. Okay? It could be a prayer song that's being sung, but you're not engaging in the prayer. You're just singing a song. Okay? So you see the difference? You can... You can sing a prayer song, but that doesn't mean you're praying. But if you connect, if you engage your spirit and bring your attention to God himself, now there's a, a spiritual connection that's made. You are singing in the spirit, and when you sing in the spirit, the not only are you encouraged, but the congregation is encouraged as well. So... First thing Paul says is pray in the Spirit. Make that direct connection to God. When? On all occasions. Paul, Paul's emphasis in this verse, you'll see it three times, I think. On all occasions, with all kinds of prayers, with all kinds of requests, and for all God's people. No, four times. All, 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 all. There is a spiritual war going on, folks. And we need the Lord's help, and we need the Lord's power. So, when is it appropriate to pray? On all, all occasions, whenever the Spirit leads. So, pray on the phone. How many of you have prayed on the phone? Did it seem weird the first time you did it? <laughs> what, can you pray on the phone? Uh, let's see, God persons, I, I think that's a good connection there, all right? Um, wherever you are, whether you're at work, 
whether you're at Myers or Walmart or whatever other store you go to, or the gas station, or a friend's house, wherever you are, if there's an occasion the Spirit leads you, you pray. Whoever you are with, you know the, the, the Spirit prods you in your heart and in your mind. This person needs prayer. You need to pray with this person. I can guarantee you if you're young in the faith, or even you could even be old in the faith and say, no, nah, I, I don't think they'd like that. No, I'm too shy. I'll pray for them in my mind. And what the Spirit of God is prompting you to do is pray for this person out loud so they will be encouraged. It's the ministry of Christians, of the saints, to believers and unbelievers. How many of you have prayed for a waiter or a waitress in a restaurant because a prayer request came up? I know some of you have done that. What a great time to do it. So when do we pray? On all occasions. And if you ask a person, can I pray for you? And they say, no, what are you going to do? They can't stop you, can they? Okay? You can just, and you can also tell them, I will be praying for you. Okay? I'm not going to embarrass you, but I'll be praying for you. Now, we can all improve in this area. We can. Um, that's what Paul is teaching the church. We can all improve in this way. Don't look at this negative, well, I should have been doing this. Well, I would have done that. I wish I could have. Don't beat yourself up. Don't degrade yourself with bad talk. That's the work of the devil, to, to tear yourself down, to make yourself look worse, to, make, to think that you're lower than the dirt on the belly of a worm. You know, that's, that's not God talk, okay? Um, don't emphasize what you can't do. When it comes to prayer, number one, pray believing God, right? God can. Number two, know who you are. You're a child of God with an incredible inheritance. So because of that, you can pray big prayers. You can pray bold prayers. You can pray deep prayers. Prayers filled with faith in our God. Because our God is the God of the possible. We've, we've prayed as a congregation before, and we've seen uh, miracles happen, people healed. Why? Because we're special in the eyes of God? Yes, we are. And so is every Christian. If anybody had the thought, well, no, we aren't. Well, where would that come from? <laughs> we are all special in the eyes of God, and we have the power and the ability to ask him as his child, speaking to a loving Heavenly Father, Oh, Abba, Daddy, would you do this for so-and-so? Now, here's the thing. God knows the big picture. He knows everything, everyone, every circumstance, every situation, and he knows how to work what's best and how to work all things out for the good. For those, who are called, uh, for those who love him and are called according to his purpose, right? So that means that sometimes the answer will be no. Sometimes the answer will be yes. Sometimes the answer will be, we've got to wait a while for that. That sounds like a no, but it's not. That's when you wrestle in prayer, right? You be like Epaphras. You wrestle in prayer. You keep on praying, and you pray through. You pray through. Jesus paid the price to make it all possible. Don't waste what Jesus did, right? Pray prayers to Bind up strongholds that the devil has in people's lives. Remember Jesus says, what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. So the way I have applied that is to, when I know that a person is struggling with something that's root, is in sin, then I will ask God to bind up that stronghold in the name of Jesus. You, Christian, can pray direct prayers against these strongholds. Pride. Drugs and alcohol, unbelief, greed, 
filthy thoughts and language, diseases and sicknesses. Ask God to bind up these strongholds and tear them down in the name of Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And it's better that we do it now than have to wait when we're forced to do it. Everybody's going to do it. But I'm sure glad we're in here praising Jesus today for who he is, right? And then you can pray prayers asking God to loose his spirit over people, to loose his spirit over this land. Jesus said, what you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. He said, Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. So we pray things like, Lord, open, open up doors for the message of Christ among the pagans in our county, through Northview, through Revival Church, through Hillsdale Church. Lord, open up doors for all the Christians who, who accept you as King of Kings and Lord of Lords and Christians. When you have a spiritual talk with someone, pray with them. And, and sometimes that spiritual talk can get heated, right? Have you ever had a heated conversation over what the Bible is saying with someone? We try not to get there, but it happens. You don't want it to end there. Right? You don't, you, you know, so, so what brings peace? What brings peace when two people don't see eye to eye? Folks, you take it to the Prince of Peace. You take it to the Lord. All right, let's pray together. Oh, Lord, bless my friend and change their mind. No, because <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> Which could be true. It may not be. Lord, change me. Right? That's our prayer, Lord. Change me. Change my attitude. <laughs> it's amazing. The worship team would come up. There's something about the name of Jesus, folks. There's something about the name of Jesus. It is spiritually powerful when it is spoken in faith. People can use Jesus' name as a curse word. I've been in situa I've been in a room, rooms where the name of Jesus is just a curse word. And then someone will speak up and use Jesus' name in faith. And you know what it does? It shuts the room down. It shuts the room down. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. There is no other name given from heaven by which we may be saved. From peasants to kings, Jesus is the only one who can cleanse and who can save. Right? When Peter spoke, well, first of all, when, when, one of the most powerful prayers that Peter spoke is when he was sinking down in the water. He'd been walking on the water, right? And he's sinking, and he prayed what? Help me, Lord. Great prayer. Three words. The Lord reached down and picked him up. Sometime later, Peter and John are walking into the temple, the beautiful gate. The crippled man was there asking for alms. Peter looks at him and says, I don't have any money to give to you. But in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And there's power in the name of Jesus when it is spoken in faith. How many of us in this room have experienced healing when prayers have been spoken, been spoken for us in the name of Jesus? Hands all over the room. We know prayer works. We know the power of prayer. Let's up our game, Christians. That's what Paul is saying. 
Let's up our game. And in, in, if we're going to be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might, then let's engage in prayer all the time in the spirit for everyone. And we'll see God work in ways that actually we, couldn't, we, we wouldn't have imagined. There have been times I have been amazed. Wow, look what God did. Sometimes we think, well, why is God taking so long? Oh, God's timing is perfect. He sees the big picture. I trust that. I know that. And so when we pray in the name of Jesus, we're praying in the spirits, we're praying in the authority of Jesus. And Paul gives us the key to spiritual warfare. The word of God and prayer. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we know that you are king of the universe. And we know, Lord, that you have asked us to pray to you. And you've even taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. May your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for the daily bread that you're giving us today. Keep us from evil. Lead us not into temptation. Oh, Lord, all praise and glory and honor and majesty uh, belong to you. Lord, we all know someone who's far from you. And our hearts ache for them. If a person comes to your mind right now, pray for that person by name. Someone you know is far from God and you desire for them to be drawn, brought near to God. Lift up their name before the Lord right now. Lord, there's so much conflict in our world. And there's so much conflict in a lot of churches. And we pray, Lord, that, that your peace will reign among your people. And we pray, Lord, that, that there will be a great revival to happen across this land. Open doors that happen, uh, open, that fly open. Uh, and even where we are, a door will fly open and we can share the good news of who you are and what you've done for us. Lord, help us to walk in the Spirit. Help us to pray in the Spirit. Help us, Lord, to live our lives walking with you daily. And if anyone is here, Lord, that is far from you, has not committed their lives to you, Lord, pray that you would bring your conviction upon their minds and their hearts to give their heart to you because that's where, that's where victory is found. Victory in Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in us this week and through us this week for the glory of your name. It's in your name we pray, Lord. Amen. <clears throat> There's something about the name of Jesus. Let's just remain seated as we... As we uh, contemplate on Jesus, and then um, at some point I may ask you to stand, but uh, these are um, prayer songs, these are prayer declarations, and uh, so let's, let's uh, sing and let's pray in the Spirit. <laughs> Someday. 
all stand. <clears throat> may the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you, and may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. All right, so then let's lean on the everlasting arms here. Yes. Okay, we'll be praying for Annie and her MRI. All right, any others, real quickly? Yes. That's right. So, guys, any guy that wants to come over to the house tomorrow night, we'll not make it so noisy for them that they can't hear each other, but you never know what kind of ruckus we're going to make. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> yes. Amen. Amen. You're welcome. God bless you. Yeah. All right. Here we go. <laughs> What a blessedness, what a peace in my mind. 
But we'll sing the chorus one more time. You all are dismissed. Here we go. I covered for both of us. <laughs> you can be Joe, say mine too. <laughs>